Hello, and welcome to the Brand Therapist Podcast. I am so, so excited for today's guest, Beth Lagbadia Cooper. I'm really excited because she's a thought leader in the space. Let me go and start with her bio. I'm going to read her bio, and then we'll start with the story and questions. Beth Lagbadia Cooper provides leadership direction grounded in a nurturing culture. Now, I just have to preface this with saying she's a caregiver, so there's no mistake that she put nurturing or somebody put nurturing here on the bio that strikes a balance of performance, efficiency, and innovation. Key tenets of our marketing program include an emphasis on data-driven decision-making. Love that. Testing and optimizing use of marketing technology and innovative approaches to leveraging emerging marketing strategies and channels. In her role, Beth is responsible for strengthening distinct identity, awareness, and preference for the brand vis-a-vis a strategy that is consistent with Forbes books. I want to talk about that when we get, when we finish with the, with the bio commitment to integrity, transparency, and unparalleled leadership in the publishing and authority media space. Ms. LaGuardia Cooper is also responsible for assessing and leading implementation of next level marketing strategies associated with new business opportunities. Previously, Beth served in marketing roles of growing leadership responsibility at the American Public Education, culminating with four years serving as CMO for the American Public Education as its four subsidiaries. During her tenure, (laughs) that word, that's a tough one. (laughs) She helped grow the organization from, get this, to 20 million to 650 million in annual revenue and built the marketing team from four people to 50 professionals. Prior to APEI, Beth held a variety of product management and marketing communication positions for organizations in the B2B and B2C technology services and B2B marketing agency space. Ms. LaGuardia Cooper earned an AB in economics from Duke University and an MBA in marketing from University of Maryland. She lives in Charleston, South Carolina with her husband and her 12-year-old daughter. I have to say, I got married in South Carolina, oh, in Charleston. So I love Charlestons. Love it, love it, love it. It's a new home, but I already love it dearly. Oh, that's wonderful. So I want to get into talking about publishing, marketing, you know, all those fun things. I have a lot of guests that have written books. I've written books myself. You work for Forbes Books, which is a huge publishing company. Love to talk a little bit about that. But one of my favorite things to talk about, which I want to hear your expertise on it, is personal branding right? There's nothing like a personal brand to really help us solidify that space, that PR, everything that we need to have. So welcome, welcome, Beth. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you. I'm so pleased to be here, Yamaka. So tell us a little bit about what you do um, in, in Forbes Books. And also, go ahead and go right into kind of what you guys do for your authors around marketing and how you set them up. Okay, terrific. Um, So what I do is uh, focused both on the front end of marketing our brand as Forbes Books uh, externally to build awareness and preference for what we do. And then secondly, on the internal side, uh, I have responsibility for the team that delivers all of the authority media products, the marketing products associated with the publishing and media um, arms of the business. So um, as we think about what we do as a business, so we're working with thought leaders and I feel very fortunate to work with some of the best business leaders out there to help them tell their story. And this is um, through a book, it can be, or it can be through media, through earned media and PR, through content marketing, related media, through podcasts such as this, um, and um, through any medium really out there that is all about um, taking their message, crystallizing it, and putting it in front of the audience who they want to reach an impact. When we get to um, that work, it's uh, you know from every sector and every type of entrepreneur, as well as CEOs out there, very large businesses, publicly traded, for example, 
And in some cases, they come to us with authority or thought leadership already. In other cases, they come with very little focus on their own personal brand um, and are really just starting out. Whether or not they have a, a significant list of credentials on their resume from all the companies that they've built, and and that may not have anything to do with building their personal brand. So sometimes that's a fish out of water for people, and we help them find their message, find their brand, and begin to put it into the marketplace. I love that. Now, tell me the difference, because I think listeners may want to understand the difference between Forbes book and Forbes magazine. Okay. Um, sure. So Forbes Media, which is the overarching entity that produces Forbes magazine, um, has partnered with us at Forbes Books to be the exclusive business book publisher for those leaders who are best in business. So we hold a partnership for that imprint, um, which is the book imprint under which one would publish, in addition to our namesake imprint, which is Advantage Books. So um, we are Advantage Media as a conglomerate within which we have a Forbes Books brand and an Advantage Books brand. And then our media team under Advantage Media is responsible for the big goal that people come in with to build their authority, build their thought leadership. So the book of which can be a great accelerator. Okay, tell us something here because this is really important, I think, for the listeners and I've experienced it myself. When you have all the credentials, right? You mentioned this. You have all the credentials. You're a great thought leader and you write a book. Um, it's not as straightforward, right? To just go and write a book and everybody's going to buy it. That's not the way things work. Tell us the work that really goes behind the scenes when you guys take on a you know, an individual with all those credentials, those amazing things, what are the things that need to happen to get them out into, you know, the space of thought leadership and grow their, their uh, base of followers? So uh, absolutely. So um, there's the, the work of actually creating and publishing a book, and we can speak to that for a minute. And then there's also um, how to make the book work for you in an optimal way. So the first thing we like to start with and setting expectations is that um, just because you write a book doesn't mean you're going to sell a million copies. In fact, the average person only sells a couple thousand copies um, during the book's lifetime. But that doesn't mean it can't be wildly successful for you and how you use it. And some people want the book to be a business card for their business. So essentially, it's a door opener. You're acting as a, a teacher with something to teach, not just an operator with something to sell. So people's minds are open to what you have to say because they're seeing this as a place where they can gain knowledge and be smarter as well as um, more effective in whatever their discipline is or whatever particular topic you're talking about. Um, and the goal would be to just get the book in their hands and get it open because the book, it can be great if nobody's opening it. Um, it's just like a business can be great if, if it's the best kept secret in the world. It's not doing anything for you. So our job is to sit down with authors and we start out by saying, what are your goals? What What is your why? First of all, why are you doing this? And what does the end look like? What does success look like? And then let's try to make it happen. And if it is sell a million copies, the, there's probably some expectation setting to do there. But um, typically it is, I'd like to grow my business. I want to leave a legacy. I'd like to pay it forward. I want to inspire other people. It could be any combination of those things. And then we'll set out to take a look at what your assets are today. Do you have um, influencers as well as a customer base or others in your network who will be great conduits for getting your message out there? Or do we need to build that following? Do you have great credibility today? Where are we going to put that credibility in a digital footprint? How are we going to help you own the words that are important for you to own and certainly your personal brand so that people are consistently seeing your message and every platform where you are? So, so there's a lot that does go into that planning. And then there's um, obviously a lot that goes into just sitting down, as you know, and getting your thoughts and ideas into a structured and compelling book that is going to be as successful as possible, all the way from its cover 
to every word on the inside that um, can resonate as, as much as possible with the audience or audiences you're trying to reach. So that's our job and we do it every day. Um, so it's, it's great when we have a partnership with someone who is able to open themselves up to the possibilities and allow the process to work itself because it's just like running a marathon. If you've ever done that as a good example, you set out to complete this project and you have to kind of put your faith in the hands of a process that is proven and works. And as long as you follow it, it will get you to the finish line. So um, there's a lot of ups and downs on the way and, and motivation milestones that, um, that you know, go into that process. But once that book comes out, then you have a strategic asset that you can leverage in so many ways. And we're here to help you do that. So I know you guys do a lot of different things around this piece of um, personal branding. So you have some offerings around podcasts and, you know, different things that you do for your clients. So tell us what have you seen is the most successful piece? Because I think there's this, um, people don't quite understand what personal branding really means. They're like, what do, what do you mean by person, my personal brand? So um, how does someone who um, who's just starting on this, how do they get their personal brand out there? Because they're not going to sell any books with just having a book, right? You have to have a personal brand. And you said some very key things around consistency, authority. So how does somebody do that? How does somebody build that? So we work with people who are coming uh, at any on-ramp into this world of authority. And for people who are at the beginning stages, there are foundational things that are best focused on first. The first of which, in most cases, is strategy, and it is here too. So we want to have a very clear understanding of your brand strategy and have we put that down on paper. What, is, what does that look like? What do you stand for? What's important to you? What are your key messages? And we're going to take a look at your credentials and the proof in the pudding, if you will, what experiences you have to really back that up in a credible way. So it may be that we need to focus on things like credentials and trust. And one of the first ways to do that is by helping you associate your brand with other brands that can be trusted. Now, with our imprints and in inclusive of the Forbes books imprint, that's, that's certainly one of those ways that one can build brand by association. Another would be to just take a look at your social network and identify the list of people who are there and maybe not there who you want to be in your following to um, go after um, to perhaps be a guest on a podcast with you, or you can uh, maybe interview them for an article or even just connect with them and begin to get your name in front of them in a way that uh, would be meaningful for them to share with their audience. So you're opening yourself up to a completely new network. So I would say starting out, it's all about giving you the foundational um, hub, the strategy, and then the place through which the platforms you will bring people and they'll be able to see what your brand is all about. And that will be very clear, crystal clear to them in a way that it's we always know. And marketing is all about what is in it for them. What is the value that you're offering? And we want that to be very easy to, to capture and easy to understand. So those are the first things. The next thing is the following, because we don't want to be talking in the forest where <laughs> no one can see us. <laughs> We want to be um, talking with uh, a following that is both targeted but also significant um, so that we can give you a platform. So that would be the next. And then we could go from there. So there are important strategic bets to place right from the get-go to make you more successful. You know, I, I love um, what you just said, and especially around you know, that brand association piece, I think that is such a strategic, amazing insight. And with your authority also from where you guys stand, um, you know, the media piece is to be able to connect those partnerships with the right people. And I think you said something super, super important, which is clarity, 
right? Um, because I think sometimes a lot of authors can tend to maybe just have too many words or too many phrases to say what they do. And so bringing it to a simplicity where people understand exactly. And I think the other piece that you said, which was really, really clear is to see what's in it for them, right? It's not what's in it for us. It's what's in it for them to really take it to the next level. Absolutely. And so I love, you know, all those pieces around what you can do kind of to take your personal brand to the next level. So what success have you seen in some of your authors who, who, although they had the credentials and the leadership roles and all that, but had nobody knew them beyond, you know, the, the, the company they worked at, how did, how were they able to build a huge following? Like how did they go from zero to a hundred? Well, certainly um, when we think about things that are multipliers in terms of building authority, a book can be one of those, especially when there is some level of foundation already there. And that's something we would be working on during the creation of a book if it wasn't already um, apparent and and useful to us. What I would also say um, from a success perspective, a lot of times we have people who want to speak. Um, they're not, maybe they get speaking engagement opportunities, but they're only at an industry or regional level and not more at a national level. So they're looking to level up if you will, in in terms of the platform that they're on. So this is the type of thing that we would focus on and say, well, are you positioned to be a successful speaker? Do we, let's get you some experience and let's get those assets very visible, inclusive of a speaker's reel, maybe a media kit, um, even just noting the topics that you're an expert in and maybe sharing some clips of presentations that you've done. So there is um, an assurance for event organizers or reporters that they're going to be contacting someone who is very experienced and they are gonna they're gonna know what they get um, before they even pick up the phone or or email. So this is really important and and I would just say that um, you have to be projecting the level of authority that you're looking to achieve. So we're gonna work on ways to really position that. Um, as you are climbing that ladder of authority. So um, let's get into the nitty gritties of things. Like um, when you talk about media kit, what are you looking for inside a media kit? So lots of good examples out there, but um, certainly um, where you have um, been, the topics of focus that you're um, that you're going to be able to speak to. The icons from other media, so logos are important, and that's actually a, a, something that people fail sometimes to realize is that when you have achieved uh, an earned media opportunity, it's not just working for you in that one moment in time, but you could leverage that logo and as seen in on your website, with your bio, um, anywhere on your social media platforms for years to come because that's something that you've achieved. And so let's have those types of assets work really hard for you in your media kit and in those very visible places. And the visible places are really your website, if you have one, and your LinkedIn profile. Those are the places that um, those people go to research you in addition to whatever you provide. So back to the media kit um, and what should also go in there. Of course, um, high production assets. It pays to get some good photography behind your media kit and to ensure that it's really projecting the kind of polish in every way visually that you would want to project that would be of the highest quality. So it, it really matters. And and then I would just say um, things like um, any, um, any video for a digital kit that would be worth sharing um, clips of things that you've done um, is probably worth editing and making available. And then if you are a paid speaker already, of course, you're going to put your rates there and and a little bit more of an understanding of how, um, don't forget the call to action, how to best contact you and um, get on your schedule. So I love that you said, um, don't underestimate photography. For me, um, especially what I do is about making people look 
professional. Like they, you know, the authority matches what they say they do. So it's not just about, you know, your knowledge, your understanding, your authority, you know, all your titles that doesn't compare to how also you look on the other side of things, like how are you being represented? So is your photography top notch? You know, are your videos really well edited? Um, Does your media kit look super professional? Like, you know, you know what you're doing. So I think it's an all encompassing, what I call the, the brand ecosystem or the personal brand ecosystem is all tidied up so when you put yourself out there, you look the part. That's right. That's right. Um, And just like everything else, you want to be speaking to your audience. So if to the best degree you can, you can put yourself in the shoes of the people you want to reach. What is it that you think that they would need to see? Um, And to the degree that it's accurate, obviously, and authentic, project that, project your best self to them so they don't have to do any work to figure that out. I love that you just said that. I think, you know, um, I was having a conversation with a client yesterday around, you know, one thing is your brand and one thing is your ideal client or those people you're trying to reach right? So really understanding them, it's not that you're going to change your brand, your brand will always be the same, but focusing on that client, serving them, making them feel, you know, like you understand them. And I think you're right. That connection is so critical and important. We cannot forget that. But yes, we're trying to build our personal brand. We're trying to look good. We're trying to, but then when we do, you know, whether it's a website or whatever we do, are they reflected in that? Are we saying things that they understand? Are we communicating to them? Because at the end of the day, if we don't have, you know, customers, then what are we doing? Right. Or, you know, it's, it's about building that connection. That's right. I do think a lot of people have challenges around, um, I spend all my time building the corporate brand. Do I really need to build my personal brand? Mm -hmm. And that's something that, um, you know, probably one in every three or four um, folks, uh, whether it's we call our clients members, whether it's a member or a prospective member, when I'm talking to them, they're, they're struggling with this question. And should they really put themselves out front? Is that gonna be dilutive? and distract from the corporate brand? Is it really that important? Do people really care what I have to say? And the answer is is yes, yes, yes. And there <laughs> is no time that it's ever mattered more than now because people want to buy from people. We are distrusting of what the media tells us, what advertising tells us, what a company trying to sell me something is telling me. We trust people who we view as experts, as thought leaders, as people who are not in it to get something out, but to give away something, to give knowledge away. And with knowledge comes that trust. And the trust is what leads to the place where when I'm in the market to buy a product um, or solution, I am first going to go to the person or the places that I trust. The value of that, hard to put a dollar amount on um, until you start to see hard places where the pipeline is coming in in a new way, but it is incredibly important. And you have your values, your belief system, your brand are intertwined with your corporate brand, no matter whether you like it or not. You know, I am so glad you said that, Beth. I'm so glad you said it. I didn't have to say it. It's so critical. I think individuals, you know, I get a lot of individuals that either are entrepreneurs and they're like, why don't I just focus on my business? I said, in today's world, we cannot only focus on you know, be behind our business. People want to work with people. It's all about psychology, right? That interaction, that relationship. And like you said, people trust people, not things or, you know, governments or cult. They trust other individuals. So building that loyalty and trust can only happen through communication and through putting yourself out there 
as a brand. And like you said, I always tell people, you're a brand, whether you like it or not. That's right. Because there's certain things that we exude characteristics that really build our legacy or or the impact that we want to have. And so those are things we can't take away from ourselves. So building that authority, that trust in connecting with the individuals is one of the most important thing. I always get people like, so what's the ROI? If I have to spend all this money, what's the ROI? Well, the ROI is that you are putting yourself out there to leave this legacy and this impact right? We can't always connect it to numbers, but as we become more successful and we get more contracts and we get more things, that's where the ROI is, right? That where you're able to leave your legacy and your thought, like you said, giving away your knowledge, giving away what you know, so others don't, you know, it can make it easier for them or they can get there faster or they can get that understanding. So I love, I love that you said that. So Tell me, like, if you had to give people, like, three top things to do, what would it be? One would be take a look at your LinkedIn profile. Treat it like exactly how you would prepare yourself to go out to a special event and the exact image that you want to project. And go place by place, piece by piece, and fill out elements and do it with care um, one time and then keep a regular uh, fresh look on it and add new content, if you can, two or three times a week to LinkedIn and do what we do with relationships, which is to look at other the feed you have from your fo- your followers and your connections and share their content and comment on their content, give them engagement, give them some love, begin to build that active, engaged network that will pay dividends for you. And you may set goals for yourself in terms of followers that you'd like to see by the end of the year. It's a good time of year to be setting goals or by the end of six months or maybe every three months you kind of take stock of where things are and what you could be doing. But I think it's it's pretty simple to spend a little bit of time one time over to at least get yourself to level up. Um, the second thing I would do is create a content strategy for yourself. Sit down and write down what are the core topics that I'm an expert in and make a list of how that connects at least today to trending topics going on in the world, that conversations that are coming to your attention Um, that are bubbling up as really top of mind of other people who are like you and in the audience that you want to reach. And that's where you're going to find the intersection of opportunity when you sit down to write that content. Now, I probably, I should have said this first, but the, the very first thing is really know what is, what your belief system is and what's near and dear to you in terms of the legacy, as you said, that you'd like to leave. How do I want to be thought of? Um, in my first impression and my last impression. And and that is something that you should weave in and hold true to as a true north, north star for you throughout all of this. And and you start with all of that, then I think um, a lot of good will come from it and um, you'll be ready for the next step. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I love those. You are so, you know, Obviously, you 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 guys are the experts on this, so I love how you frame that because I I have so many clients that want to do so many things, but they're not focusing on the right thing. So I love that you mentioned LinkedIn and really your values, like what do you want to do and how to think about the the trending topics and how you're connected to that. I mean, that is incredible. I love that. So tell us. Um, Beth, if somebody wants to publish with Forbes books, I know you guys only select a certain type of individuals, but um, how, what's the process? How can they get in touch with you? Sure. Thank you. Um, Well, there are, we have the two imprints and you are correct with Forbes, which is at um, Forbesbooks.com or books.forbes.com, either one. Um, so Forbesbooks.com is where I would suggest that you start and request a consultation, which is complimentary, of course, where we can do a bit of a discovery dive on what it is you're looking to do. 
And for the route of Forbes books, we do have an application process and we are taking a look at an exclusive number of business books intended to reach um, business leaders with business messages. Um, and we publish people who are best in their field. The advantage book side of things is more focused on um, other p- entrepreneurs who are perhaps not necessarily interested in the Forbes audience or um, investment there, but they are focused on reaching and uh, making a, a greater impact and reaching their audience or leaving a legacy. And we can talk about both from the Forbes books request a consult. So have, would love to talk that through. And if a book is um, out there, but just building authority and preparing oneself to produce a book later on is where you're at. We'd love to talk to you too, because there are many on-ramps to building the authority that you seek. Oh, thank you, Beth, for being on the Brown Therapist Co- Podcast. I'm so, so happy that my listeners got to hear all of this because it's so important for brand building. I so, so appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for listening in. And thank you for being on the Brand Therapist Podcast. I love it. Thank you, Yamaka. See you on the next show. Oh, 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 oh